This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this lesson, we're going to begin to discuss styles. If you'd like to follow along, go under the File menu to Open, and in the Sample Files folder, scroll down to 0801, and inside look at Paragraph Styles and just click Open. An InDesign user who is not setting up and using styles is working way harder than they should be, and you're about to see why. Before we begin, why don't we go to the Zoom tool and just click and drag across the width of our page. And I'm also going to drag my Paragraph Styles panel out from its docking so I don't lose anything in my recording from the Options menu. Why don't we start by creating a style for our subheads. This is the formatted text that I want to use for a subhead. I'm in my selection tool, so I'm just going to double click to get an insert point with my type tool in that subhead. Creating a style is really easy. All I have to do is to go to the options menu for the paragraph styles panel to the very first listing, new paragraph style. Then for style name, just name it a name that makes sense to you. So I'm just going to call it subhead. Next, I want to make sure that Apply Style to Selection is checked so that the formatted text that I'm using to pick up the styles, the style settings, the style is actually applied to that text. And I'm also going to hit Preview so that I can see that the style is actually added to my Paragraph Styles panel and is also highlighted, which means that it has been applied to this text. Now, all I have to do is click OK. I'm done. It's that easy. I now have a style, and I can start formatting the rest of my copy. I've already set up a body text style, which has been applied to this first body text paragraph. Now, because of the kind of formatting that I have here, where I have mostly body text, and it's being interrupted every so often by a subhead, I'm going to select all of my text after my second paragraph to scroll all the way down to the bottom of the second page and apply body text. Let me scroll back up. And you can see that body text has been applied. Well, why did I do that? Because now I have over half of my formatting done. All I have to do is click in a subhead and then click on my subhead style. That's pretty easy. Let me go down to the next subhead and click on my subhead style. Let me scroll down a little bit further. Click in my next subhead and click on my subhead style. Well, is there a faster way to apply your styles? Well, you could actually set up a keyboard shortcut for each one of your styles. Let me show you how that's done. I'm going to double click on my subhead listing. And you can see that there's a field called Shortcut. The trick to creating a shortcut is to use your Command key on a Mac, your Control key on a PC, plus a number. But it's not just any ordinary number. It has to be a number from the numerical keypad to the right side of your keyboard. So if I were to hit on a Mac Command 1 with that number one from the numerical keypad, it actually will type in the shortcut there. On a PC, I would do Control-1. Now, if I had a lot of keyboard shortcuts to set up, I could add to the Command or Control. I could add a Shift key. Or on a Mac, I can add an Option. Or on a PC, I could add an Alt. So you can have commands for virtually every single paragraph style if you wanted. I'm going to click OK. And you can see that command number one, or control number one if you're on a PC, has now been added next to that paragraph style listing. So now if I click in one of my subheads and I hit command or control one, there it is. It's applied it. I could also do this. Let me scroll down a little bit further. And maybe what I'll do is select part of a subhead 
and go to my eyedropper tool and click on that selected text to pick up the formatting. It's not just picking up the formatting because it has a style applied to it. If I click and drag across any part of that next subhead, it's going to apply the style because it's paragraph wide formatting. So that's another way to save some time. Let me click on my last subhead and apply the formatting to that. I wonder what would happen if I had a very long document and I wanted to change my subheads afterwards or any one of my paragraph styles. Can I do that? Absolutely. That's part of what makes it so powerful. I'm going to select my first subhead and I'm going to center it. And I'm going to make it in my swatches panel. Let's say red. And maybe I want to make it in my character panel a little bigger. And I want to increase the letting. So I'm making a lot of changes. Now, if I had to do this to each and every one of my subheads, that would take a lot of time. But you can see in my paragraph styles panel next to the subhead, there's a plus mark. That means there was local overrides to that subhead formatting that was not in my subhead style. If I wanted to get rid of that little plus mark that's letting me know that there's been overrides, all I have to do is hold down Option on a Mac, Alt on a PC, and click on the listing, and it's going to get rid of all local overrides. But instead, I actually want to use the formatting in that one changed subhead to redefine my entire style. So you can see all of the subheads are now red, and they're bigger, and the letting has been increased, and it was really fast. So styles help you set up your formatting of your document very quickly and consistently, and they also allow you to change that formatting quickly and consistently. Let's talk a little bit more about what is in the Paragraph Styles Options window. I'm just going to double click on Subhead to open it up. There is something that's called Based On. What is that about? Based On will actually base one paragraph style on another paragraph style. And a word of caution about Based On. Whatever you do, you have to make sure that it makes total sense. You're never going to base your body text style on a headline style or on a subhead style. They have nothing in common. If you have a body text style and you wanted to create a bullet style that goes with that body text style, base your bullet style on your body text style. That makes total sense. There's also something called next style, which we're going to talk about in an upcoming lesson. I'm just going to click OK, and we're going to talk a little bit more about what's under the options menu of the paragraph styles panel. There's something that's called break link to style. What that would do is whatever paragraph I'm in, it would break the link of that paragraph to the paragraph style, yet it would retain the formatting. I could also, if I had styles that existed in some other document, I could load those styles. You can see it says load paragraph styles, load all text styles. I could load them from the pre-existing document so I don't have to recreate my styles. So if I'm working on a campaign, I'm guaranteed that that campaign formatting is going to be consistent. Let's say I had a lot of styles that I brought in. I loaded them in from some other document, and I wasn't using half of them. I could select all of the unused styles. Well, you can see all of mine are being used. And I could just delete them by clicking on the trash. One last thing. Let's take a quick look at the panel. Let's say I had a lot of styles. I was working on a newsletter and I had 10 different styles in there. And I was having trouble finding them because they weren't in alphabetical order. They were in the order that I created them. So let me click on my options menu and go down to sort by name. And you're going to see that now the styles are alphabetical. We're going to continue to discuss styles in the next lesson.